slight mistake in how I used the command. No, it'll work. There we go. It'll, it'll definitely work now. Okay. So they're not actually finding a new target. Ah, and of course I know why that is as well. Because when I went through and determined to look for an enemy, all I've literally done is checked that they're within range and you can see them, but you can see dead bodies. So all we need to do is add in here, uh, or anywhere in here, if T entity A uh, health is greater than zero. Okay. So like I say, not the best um, coder in the world, and there are definitely going to be issues, but this is this is definitely uh, getting on the right track now. So we're going to just go ahead and separate these guys around a bit so that you can see um, how the script actually differentiates between the two the enemies. So uh, actually, like I can stay right there. So rather than all going for one, they should now like find individual targets because they will be slightly closer to some rather than others. So as you can see he's running over here, they're going over that way, over here, they can try some swaps, and as you can see it all works very nicely until everyone dies and then they'll just run off and stop. Um, because there's no waypoint, so what we'll do now is we'll add in some waypoints for them to follow. Uh, obviously they won't do this at the start. Don't know if you can follow both ends. Can you follow both ends? Let's just try it like that. Um, so yeah, these guys won, so hopefully I run that, they will, although they sort of ignore the waypoints because they're already straight away in attack range, they should hopefully then return and follow the waypoints. Once they run out of this, so one more guy to die, okay, and then rather than running forward over there, as you can see, they now actually return to said waypoint, and Will they follow it, or are they just going to stand here? Okay, so let me just go stand here. I'm uh, not sure why that is. Uh, okay. So we told them to go back to this mode. And... Go to walk, go to disposition. So they definitely went back. So why didn't they change? I'm just going to add in an unarmed player. Pull here just so that they don't have their gun out when they walk the path. Uh, if they ever walk the path, I'm not sure why they don't, to be honest. So clearly, still they went back to the actual path point. So why don't they walk it? Right, for now I'm just going to reduce the attack range and make sure they do actually uh, follow the path in the first place. So, okay, that's still way too close apparently. Interesting. 300 then. Oh, did I? Ah, of 
course, I didn't set the attack range in the actual script today. There you go, that would be a problem. Uh, so if distance is nearest enemy, so what we've done is we need to change this to attack range for a start. So now they would always check at the maximum start and the maximum attack range, and then they will know that if anyone is nearer than their attack range. So they probably won't even notice each other this time, all being well. There we go, they're just wandering along. don't even know these guys exist. So they do follow the path, brilliant. Not sure why they wouldn't go back to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make these paths come down towards the enemies. Oh, where did that go there? Okay, whatever. Right. So now hopefully they will all walk to the grey guys will all walk towards the uh, red team. Sort of slowly, and as you can see he's already sort of noticed and gone, oh wait on a minute, there's someone over there. And then hopefully these two should start shooting at each other. didn't seem to be facing each other, which was weird. So he's going to go around here. Again, the attack range is now very small, so... I should just about notice each other around now. No? No? Okay. So yeah, like I say, the attack range is now very, very small because I kind of um, messed up what I was testing with, so let's try again. 600 this time. Hopefully now they will actually notice each other a bit better. Uh, obviously this is still a bit small. Um, probably want a slightly larger attack range. Not even sure how he's noticing that guy. It's the way out of his range. And he's not rotating around, which is odd. <laughs> so Very disorganized combat right now. Um, okay, well, I thought these were way in the sort of right position for these guys to spot each other, but obviously not. Uh, actually, let's move this guy over this way so that he's more in line with everyone else. Uh, oh, that's why he's moving forward. He's following that point, isn't he? Of course. He's moving, he's following this waypoint because not only can these guys follow it, but they can follow it, of course. So that's why he was moving, and the other guys aren't moving. So we'll go ahead and put these guys in the same sort of uh, place, as it were. So he should follow that, he'll follow that one. Right, uh, I just want to double check that I actually put in a rotate. Slowly. E, G, and T, X, and Z, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't seem to, they don't seem to be facing the right 
会的是呗。How about we just remove that for now? Try it like that. Okay, so now they should all move in the right sort of direction at slightly different times, but at least they'll all be moving and now they should all uh, go ahead and fire. It's quite hard to tell with any sort of mus muzzle flashes and stuff who's actually firing, uh, but they should actually be a bit more alert now. But you can, the basic script is, is working at least. You can see that guy, those guys over there having a little fight. These two not numbered. Let's see, like I say, the attack rate is really small right now. Okay, so as you can see, they moved swiftly as a team there, did pretty well. And maybe that guy will catch up with them. Oh, oh, oh yeah, fight. And then we'll probably catch this one as well. And that should be the end of it because I don't think these guys are ever going to meet. So, yep, yeah, there we go, works fine now. So, that is the basics of team based combat. Now, obviously, the player is being completely ignored. So, now we need to try and uh, incorporate the, the uh, player into this. So, First things first is you need to decide which team the player is going to be on, if any. So we're going to go with something along the lines of um, If get player distance is less than nearest enemy distance, then if uh, AI could see GNST E object, and then again you just go to uh, G player plus X, G player plus Y. Said with one. So if the player is nearer than the enemy and uh, the enemy can see the player, then rather than going for the enemy, we're going to go with um, the player. So nearest enemy dist e equals get player distance and target enemy. E equals, and then we're just going to go with G player object num, I think it is. But then obviously, this is not taking into account the team, so we need to go if team E doesn't equal, and then we're going to just go with team player. And Need to put that in brackets, sorry. Right, so then we need to specify which team the player is on. So we're just going to like team player equals, and then we're going to go with, we're going to just put the, the player on the first uh, team for now. On the first um, team that's been put down, which is in this case this num this guy here, I think. Oh, no. Which one was it? This one. This one. This was the first one. So this is the team that the players can be on. But you can specify that yourself if you want to. Just change this to whatever. So in this case, it would be our soldier red. I'm just going to make it nice and simple on myself and just go with. Same like that. 
um, and then I think that's right on the G object num. I'm just going to double check that. Uh, G objects. Oh, it's NO. Okay. Right. Uh, so I think that should work. It might not. Again, like I say, definitely a learning experience doing this whole thing right now. And then I'm going to give myself a weapon. Actually, let's just make that bigger so I can actually read it. Uh, let's go with a. Let's just go with an Uzi just to make it nice and easy for me to die because I hate Uzi as a weapon. Always jams on me. Okay, so. All being well, the red guys should ignore me, but the blue or grey team should fight me. So, as you can see, they ignore me, and then we have a error 120. 120, which is get distance. E target enemy attack range target enemy target enemy being the player distance uh, okay so it, it looks like it doesn't like me using the actual object number unless I did get it wrong still G player object number. No, that looks right. Mm, okay, so yeah, apparently you can't do it like this. <sighs> Which means I'm going to have to duplicate all of it, I guess. Target enemy equals. No, I'm just going to change this to clever then. It will just be for this one time. So basically, all I'm going to do is if target enemy e doesn't equal player, then we will do that as normal. Otherwise, we will add in some extra code so if get player fortunately oops but unfortunately I am gonna have to duplicate everything never mind so AI soldier state attack else set out to run and then AI instigate position G M C E object G player process, G player set in this case. Right, so that's the movement done for going to the player, and then likewise we're going to go do the same here. So if our target enemy E doesn't equal player, deal with that. Otherwise, if get player distance is less than attack range. X, G, play boss Z, and if get timer, E is creating an attack delay, start the timer, play the sound, and hurt player E, damage, end, end. Okay, uh, nope, I haven't ended enough. Oh, I haven't put the else in, sorry. So that should be end, and then this should be else. And then AI is so just state. Move. And then end. So if target enemy E doesn't equal nil, if uh, this is going to need to be changed as well, 
save if target enemy e doesn't equal player then we do that as normal else uh, wait, wait. It needs to be there else if uh, g player health is less than one or get timer e is greater than attack delay times two then we just copy this here and then another end uh, not really this for now because I don't need any more so if I have not got the right state now uh, okay so oh did I not add the extra end here I did not okay and I think I probably didn't add it here either uh, no that's fine that's okay that one's okay. This one is okay. So it must be this bit. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, we've just gone through and I have added um, a little bit extra for if the if it's an enemy because literally Game Guru doesn't detect the player as an object. Like it does with an AI character. Uh, so, inputting this E as the player's entity number doesn't actually work. It will return that error as you saw. So, hopefully, now it should work because I've just added an extra couple of variables to slightly change what happens if it's actually a player. So, again, we've got the red guys, they don't worry about me. And if I get near this guy, Damage. Uh, where is it? Her player E damage. I swear that's how that works. Her player E value. E damage. What did I do wrong now? Can see shooting at me. Is it? No, I would have been alive for long enough. Did I spell something? No. Oh, of course. I called it damage rather than attack damage. There we go. Damage was obviously non existent, so it would have been zero. And that's why I wasn't taking any damage. Small mistake. But fixable, right? So, as you can see, walk forward to this way, sees me now, hurts me. And again, walk forward to this guy, sees me, shoots me. And then they carry on fighting us themselves. So, now we have working allies and. Double kill! <laughs> so I should be able to. He's going to probably kill me straight out. Whoop, there he goes. I'm going to run to. Nope. He, that's because I've set them to. You know, if they don't see you for a certain amount of time, they will go ahead and just run back to where they need to go. And obviously, that timer needs a little bit of adjusting. Yeah, that's, that's fine. We can do that. Um, so if, um, let's say if you have a target, we are going to start the timer right here. So if you have a target, you're going to move towards that um, set position. And then hopefully if you move out of range, that should be all you need to do. Uh, to let them follow you for now, just a couple seconds in this case. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's, it's, it's 
it's literally because it's attack delay times two. Uh, and they don't actually follow you very well at all. And as you can see, you can sort of almost drag them away, almost. It needs slightly longer, I think. So we'll go ahead and we'll just change that. Uh, where is it? Here. Okay, so we're just getting a six. I think six is going to be fine. That is the problem, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the problem. Uh, we haven't got anything. Okay, let's just let's just check. I think that is the problem. This obviously is why I say that having it check for a new target every single loop is kind of not as good. This and the, that and the fact that it kind of eats the performance a bit. So hopefully you should follow me for a bit longer this time. There we go. As you can see, he's clearly following me for a lot longer than he was. And I should be able to try to win my team. Teamwork, you can now actually start with the whoops, I think just the preparing guy with a little bit of a misclick there. Uh, it's very good. Okay, so there we go, we now we now actually managed to win this. I don't think there's nothing stopping you from winning the game if you want to. That's uh, totally up to you. <coughs> Safe in the lobby so they won't fire back. Yeah, preferably fine to teabag them when you like. Uh, okay, so one more uh, small adjustment perhaps is something like team order. So that would be um, preferably that would be handled in a different script maybe. Uh, but I'm just going to add in here and see how, how it goes. So we're going to go with if uh, get player distance he is less than I don't know. Let's say um, what should we go with? Let's go with 500. So if the player is within 500, and if team E equals team player. Because obviously we need this shout to only go out to people on your own on your on the player's team. And then this is gonna be a shout that the player is gonna Okay, uh back. I forgot what I was saying. Um yeah, so this is gonna be a shout out for the same team, right? So you're only going to want to uh, affect players that are on your team and within a certain distance. Uh, you can change that yourself. Actually, I might just add that to the top. So we'll go with shout range now, do And we'll just add that at the top here. Um, what did I have? 500, I think it was. Uh, tell you what, let's just go with 400 just to make it slightly smaller. I don't want to be shouting across the map. Um, okay, so if you're in range and you're on the same team, we're going to go with a uh, slightly altered version of wherever it's gone. Uh, this. So. Uh, first, actually, we're going to go with if g uh, key press e equals one, and um, let's just go with pressed equals zero and pressed equals one. Okay, so uh, if you press e just to perform the shout, you can set anything you like for this. I'm just going to go with that. 
for now, just so it's actually uh, shouting when I press E. But again, you can press Control, Alt, Space, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, whatever you set, just change this. Uh, if it's not a, one of these commands, you're going to have to put like if uh, get scan code equals uh, like 18 is E, so whatever. You can, you can find those values uh, on the forums or uh, yeah, definitely. You can find them on the forums or I think any sort of. Uh, I think they might be just standard ASCII, I'm not sure. But anyway. That will do for now. If you press E, then you're going to perform the shout, and we're going to, like I say, do a slightly altered version of this shout right here. And basically, all I'm going to change is um. Well, what do I want to change? I want to change the player distance. Let's just close that. It's less than nearest enemy distance. Uh, so let's just reset that. Okay, so if you are on the, if you see an enemy within players uh, range, and you can see that enemy, then you're going to go ahead and change your target to that. Uh, Target for now. <coughs> and then we're just going to go if G, key press E equals zero, then press equals zero. Okay, just so you can shout again. And I am going to add in a little prompt duration just so we can see it actually triggering. And then we go. Guys, help over here. Uh, a bit of a duration in, otherwise we will be getting crashes. Right, so there we go. Just literally going to go, guys, help over here, and then they should, instead of finding a target near them, they'll find a target slightly nearer to the player. So it will just increase their range a little bit more. As long as they can see the target. If they can't see the target, well, then they'll just carry on as they were. So again, just gonna go, guys over here. Nope, can't see him. Guys over here. Nope, can't see him. Well, that might be because we're too far away. So keep shouting, and hopefully, eventually, 